So, hello everybody and welcome to the TT Institute, and yes, welcome to the DVD collection for 2018. So yeah, um, I was debating whether to put this video out now or put it out later on in the year, or even was debating it, playing with the idea before, before you know, now in like February time, but I thought nah, my DVDs haven't changed that much before that, but now they, they have, they've changed, they've changed, like my collection's changed a good bit since... Um, the, um, the collection update, the one year anniversary update. So I thought um, now would be an opportunity to update the DVD collection because, uh, yeah, I, you know, you know, videos have been a bit stagnant. That's really because Doctor Who isn't back until you know, you know, autumn time this year, which is really, really sad. But yeah, without any further ado, let's just you know get on with this collection video and get on with the DVDs. Okay then, let's get started. So, first of all we have the Lost in Time box set, which contains obviously all the lost stories of the 60s, which is an amazing box set, might I add. It is a really, really great collector's piece. I absolutely adore this. It's really, really good. Then we have An Unearthly Child. Um, this one's growing on me. Part 1 is always going to be amazing, always going to be the be best part of this story. But I mean... Um, it's, I'm, the other three episodes are starting to grow on me a bit more, the part with the cavemen and all that, that's not too bad nowadays, I don't mind it. And same with the Daleks, to be honest, its story is growing on me. I still think five, episode five and six are pretty unnecessary, especially episode five, but um, all the same though, I do definitely think that it's not bad. I do find some enjoyment out of this, I just have to be in the mood to watch it, I suppose. Okay, then we have Edge of Destruction, which I really enjoy. Not a lot of people do, don't, not many people like, you don't really find people appreciating this one, but I don't see, you know, why, because I, I find it a really enjoyable story. We have the Aztecs. Uh, now, I'm growing an appreciation for the historical stories of the Hartnell era now, so this one is a hidden gem for me at the moment. I really enjoy this one. Then we have Dalek Invasion of Earth, another one that I really, really enjoy. Um, I really enjoy Dalek, Dalek Invasion of Earth. It's one of the first Hartnell stories I, I watched. It's one of the first classic stories I watched, so this one has a close place to my heart. The Rescue, um, not a fan of that. We have uh, The Romans, which I don't mind nowadays. It's a fun little runaround, but if you take it seriously, it might bug you, I suppose. Then we have my favourite Hartnell story, which is a very, very controversial opinion of mine, I know. But it is the Space Museum, and I... This is a little gem. This is a gem for me. I do really, really find enjoyment out of this story. I don't know why, and that hence why I got it signed by Maureen O'Brien. I really, really enjoy this story. I, I don't know why. Please don't judge me. I, I really enjoy this this story. It's a really good one for me. The Chase. Uh, not all it's cracked up to be. I'm afraid. I'm not the biggest fan of this one. I suppose it's all right. Well, after the first two episodes, but I still feel like it's a bit sluggish. It's not. It's not the best. The time meddler, not worth mentioning. The gunfighters, um, mm, it's okay. Not the biggest fan of that one. Um, the war machines, not a terrible story actually. It's not the worst. Then we have the turn of planet, which I absolutely adore. This one is, oh, it's so good. It's such a good story. I love it to pieces. It's such a good one, it's a hidden gem there. And next up, we have another hidden gem right here in the 60s. We have Power of the Daleks, which is a really good one. I'm really glad that they animated this because it really is worth it. It's a really amazing, you know, highlight in Doctor Who history. It is a, I really enjoy it. It's really, really good. For a six-parter, it doesn't, it doesn't slow down. It doesn't feel sloggish at all. It's really, really well done. Then we have the... Uh, um, Let's just, you know, slide that back in there and just forget that existed. Then we have the moon base, which I absolutely adore this one. It is such an underrated masterpiece. It, it's, it's hidden in the shadow of Tomb of the Cybermen, and it's such a shame because this one needs to be appreciated more. It is the definitive base under siege story for me. 
It is my favourite Cyberman story. It is one of my favourite Troughton stories. I don't know if he is my actually my absolute favourite Troughton story because there are so many good ones to choose from, evidently. But um, this one is definitely up there, and it's such a highlight for me. Four parts, perfect length. Oh, I, I just love this story so much. I highly recommend it. If you love the 60s Cybermen, get this one, please. It's so good. Team of the Cybermen, really, really good, actually. I mean, sure, I did put it put it down for, you know, shadowing the moon base, but I still enjoy this one a lot. It's, it's such an enjoyable one, and I can see why it's Matt Smith's favourite Doctor Who story. But, I mean, um, like I say, these are my favourite Cybermen design. I'm glad they continued these from the moon base. Um... And it's a really, really good one. I really, really enjoy this story as well. Then we have the Ice Warriors, which I have yet to watch, believe it or not. It's on my to-do list, but I haven't really given this one a try yet. Then we have Enemy of the World, which is a masterpiece of a story right here. Then we have Enemy of the World Special Edition, which is a good release, actually. It, I do prefer this one to this um, release here. But if I had to choose between the two, obviously I'd choose this one, but I wouldn't choose to get both if I already had this one. I don't think it's worth it. I, It's still a, a great release, and if you don't have the original version, then I'd say definitely pick this one up. But if you already have the original, it's not. It's not, it's not a must get, if you get what I'm trying to say, but if you worship this story, then by all means, get them both, because it's an amazing story. Then we have the Web of Fear, which, um, slightly overrated in my opinion. I know it's a very unpopular opinion, but I couldn't really get into this one. It found it a bit slow at times. I don't know why. Then we have the Mind Robber, which, I love this one so much. I don't know why. I really, really do. It's such, uh, it's such a, such a quaint little story. It really works. I really do enjoy it. There's so many interesting things in this story that I'd want to pick up on, but it's it's a really, really fun one to watch. It really is. We have um, The Invasion, which, yeah, yeah, it's a good story. It's definitely it's not the best from the 60s, Cybermen, but I think it's a really good one. I feel like it takes its time to build up, but I feel the build up does really help to impact the climax, and that's why it works. It's just I wish that we saw a little bit more of the Cybermen in the first half of the of the of the of this serial seeds of death love it amazing nothing needs to be said here it's just amazing and then we have the war games which is a magnificent story to say the least it's um it's really good uh, um one thing i will say though is that i think it would benefit from being eight parts instead of ten I, I think that this story is really really good but i feel like it could do with cutting down on one or two episodes and then it would be Perfection. I really do. I, I feel this could have been one of the greats if it was just cut down on one or two, you know, episodes. Then we have Spearhead from Space. I didn't know where to put this release, to be honest. I keep well, keep finding it difficult to place this somewhere. But yeah, this Blu-ray of this, um, it's okay. Not really worth your money. It doesn't improve the quality too much, but it's all right. And obviously, Spearhead from Space, the, my DVD release of it. It's a really, really good story. It's an amazing story. I love Spearhead from Space so much. It is ooh, probably my favourite John Pertwee story, but there are so many good ones to choose from. Just saying. Doctor and the Silurians, yeah, it's growing on me. It's a, it's a good one. It's not as, as slow and as boring as I per previously perceived it. Here's the Ambassadors of Death. Um, yeah, um, it's an underrated gem. I really enjoy this one. It's a it's a really, really underrated piece in season seven, but season seven is a really consistent season of the show, so a lot of people love it, so I, I can and I can see why. And here's Inferno, which is another really good one in my opinion. I find so much enjoyment out of this one. It's very, very bleak and you have to be in the mood, you know, to watch it. But I do definitely believe that this one is really really good I, I really really enjoy this and enjoy this story I, I really do okay now we move on to Terror of the Autons which is a good story in my opinion it's an underrated one people tend to overlook this one but I rather enjoy it for the introduction of the master and Joe Grant so this story is a lot going for it in my opinion I don't know it's a good story then we have Mind of Evil previously one of my favorite stories of all time nowadays forgettable in my opinion nothing really happens like I don't know because obviously as you can see it was one of my favorites because it's signed by Katie Manning 
Um, I still find it enjoyable, I suppose, but it's like there are so so many better Pertwee stories for me to go for, which is a shame because I used to love this one. Then we have Claws of Axos, which is. Uh, you see, I don't really find that much enjoyment out of this one, which is a shame because I thought I'd really. I, I've heard a lot of people praising it over the years, so it's like to actually finally watch it and it being a letdown, it's like it's a bit of disheartening to be honest. Here's an underrated gem right here, I, The Colony in Space, which I really, really love. I don't know why, but I just do. People tend to overlook this one, you don't really hear many people talking about it, but I really, really appreciate this one. It's a really, it's a really good story. Then we have The Daemons, which um, is signed by Stephen Cole, I believe, and he plays Bog the Daemon, and yeah, I really, really love this one. It's another amazing Pertwee story, in my opinion, I love it so much. Day of the Daleks, really good. Really, really good story, that. Then we move on to Curse of Peladon, which I was never really a big fan of it, and I've only really watched it twice, and I'm, and I'm like, nah. I'm like, no, I, I just don't really like it at all. It's not enjoyable in the slightest. I don't know why it's popular. Not that nice. Then we have the Sea Devils, which is okay. It's an alright story. It, it has its moments. Uh, the mutants, which I don't mind, I suppose. It's just it's a bit. There's, there's a lot. There's a lot of flaws in this story, but doesn't mean it's terrible, I suppose. The time monster, a guilty pleasure of mine. I enjoy it somehow. The three doctors, which I really, really enjoy. It's a really, really fun story. You shouldn't really take it seriously, but it is a really, really fun story to watch. I, I do come back to this one from time from time to time. Carnival of Monsters, another quite enjoyable story to be honest. I quite enjoy this one. It's it's not your traditional story, but that's why I like it, I suppose. It's really unique in this sort of Pertwee era and Doctor Who really. It's quite an enjoyable one. Frontier in Space, which is so good. I really love that one. Planet of the Daleks, which is overrated. Green Death, which is also overrated. Please don't hate me, but I, I, I used to love this one. I used to love this one, but I just can't get past four now. I don't know what's happened. I need to watch it again, to be honest. We have the Time Warrior, one of my favourite stories of all time. I love it so much. We have my dad's copy of the Time Warrior, which is signed by Liz Sladen, which is really lovely to have. Then we have Invasion of the Dinosaurs, a guilty pleasure of mine. Planet of the Daleks, which is quite a good story actually, quite enjoy that one. Here we have another guilty pleasure of mine, Monster Peladon, which I don't know why I like it, but I just do. And then on the end here we have Planet of the Spiders, which is a lagluster end to the monumental Pertwee era, but whatever. Okay, now on to the second row we have Robot, which is a brilliant story. I absolutely adore this one. It's one of the best openings to a Doctor's era ever. I love that one. Ark in Space, fantastic story. Nothing needs to be said here. The effects are excusable for how great of a story it is. Sontan Experiment, one of my first Doctor stories I've ever watched. Lovely. Absolutely lovely. It's such a short but sweet episode. I love this one so much. Genesis the Daleks speaks for itself. Revenge of the Sidemen, um, underrated. Really, really love this one. Don't know why people don't like it these days, but I really love it. Terror of the Zygons, amazing story, absolutely amazing. Planet of Evil, um, I really like this one. Say what you will, I think it's so, got such a unique like tone to it, such a really cool atmosphere. It's really unique, and I find it so intriguing, especially the planet, you know? I, I, I do, I don't know why. We have um, Pyramids of Mars, which um, it's good, but it's not all it's cracked up to be. It's a lot of running around back and forward for no apparent reason. I still love it. It's still a good story, but it's just not as good as people say it is, I suppose. Then we have Android Invasion, which isn't really the best in my opinion. It's good. It's a good story. It's not terrible by any stretch of the imagination, but it's not... Amazing. 
it's it's got some really interesting ideas in it. Don't get me wrong; it's good at times. Brain of Morbius. Um, oh, don't even get. Ugh, it's overrated. It's so overrated. I don't know why people like this story, to be honest. Seeds of Doom. If it was a four-parter, it would be among one of the greats, like Genesis of the Daleks. But it's a six-parter, which is a shame, because it does drag a bit. Mask of Mandragora, underrated. Hand of Fear. Deadly Assassin, um, yeah, not bad. It really is a quite a good story, to be honest. It's really charming, it's really unique. Set on Gallifrey with the Master. What more could you want from a Doctor Who story? Face of Evil. Underrated. I'm just saying that. Underrated. Robots of Death. Yeah, quite good, actually. Quite a good story. Times of Wang Chiang. Amazing. Absolutely amazing. Perfect length, perfect cast, perfect acting, perfect everything. The only thing that's wrong is the giant rat. Horror Fang Rock, one of my uh, childhood stories here. Really, really love this one. It's such a bleak story, such an interesting like atmosphere to it. It just works. It just works as a story, and I love it. Invisible Enemy? Not terrible, I suppose. Avenger of the Fendel? Not all it's cracked up to be. It's a good one, but it's nothing spectacular. Sunmakers? Um... Whatever the fuck that is. Um... Invasion of Time? Really love this one, actually. Really underrated, in my opinion. I especially love the cliffhanger. Um, where, you know, where the Doctor's, you know, thinks he's fixed everything and then the Sontarans show up. I love that cliffhanger and I, and I find the story underrated. Really like that one. Now moving on to the key to time, we have the Rybos operation, which isn't bad. In my opinion, it's okay. The Pirate Planet? Ugh. Go away. The Stones of Blood? <coughs> Androids of Tara, thank God, a great story. Um, yeah, I loved Android Guitar. It's a real breath of fresh air. It's a, it's an interesting story. Power of Crawl, eh, it's fun. It's a fun little, you know, romp. It's alright. It's not a bad story. Then we have the Armageddon Factor, a lackluster end to a quite a mixed series. It's, ooh, it's okay. It's, mm, it's slow. It's so slow and it has such a small budget. That's where it goes wrong. It's just such a shame. Just near Daleks, um. Neither here nor there, to be honest. It's not amazing, but it's not as bad as people say it is. So it's kind of ugh for me. It's kind of a bit ugh. City of Death. Oh, thank goodness. Really good. A really, really good story here. I, oh, really, really fun story. I don't, there's nothing really you can fault this story on, to be honest. It's got such an interesting story. Oh, the monster design is so weird and so stupid, but it's so good at the same time. That's why I love it. The story just does so well at being its own identity. It just works. Creature from the Pit. Um, it's an abomination. Honda Naimon. Not worth a second thought. Sharda. I haven't actually experienced this story, believe it or not. Yeah, and here's the other version of Sharda. Yeah, haven't experienced it. I am going to at some point, it's just I haven't found the time to. Yeah, it's a new release, and I wanted to get this um, before watching this one, because apparently this version is, you know, a lot better than this, and you know, this version. But all the same, you know what I mean? I, I really, really wanted to give this a give this a try, but I just haven't really found time to. Then we move on to the Space Trilogy with uh, Full Circle. Mm, no, don't really like it. State of Decay. Um, it's not bad. It's fun, I suppose. I don't know. It's a weird one. Then we have Warrior's Gate, which is just a flat out no, in my opinion. Just a, just a go away. Keeper of Traken, quite good actually. Got this signed by Jeffrey Beavers. Quite a good story. Like that one. Logopolis. Such a letdown. I don't like that one. Castrovalva. Diabolical. Kinder. Yeah, I like Kinder. Kinder's just a, a quaint little story. It's charming. It's a nice idea to it. It's got some nice ideas. Visitation. Not really much to say about this one. It's creative, to say the least. It's okay. It's not a bad one. Um, Black Orchid. Um, I mean, uh, I'd say give it a try. But don't expect anything amazing. 
Earthshock, flipping fantastic. I love Earthshock. It's such a brilliant story. I, I'm not going to spoil anything, but something great happens in it. <laughs> um, it's just a really, really fun story. It's such a good Cyberman story. It just really works. Time flight. Fuck off. Arc of Infinity. Fuck off. Snake. Uh, that's not Snake Dance. Uh, snake Dance. Um, uh, I don't really like that one, to be honest. It's not that enjoyable at all. Five Dogs, on the other hand, is warming up to me. It's warming to me. It's not the worst in the world anymore. I don't hate it. It's not. It's neither here nor there, to be honest. Like I said with Destiny of the Daleks, it's okay. It works. Let me have whatever this piece of shit is. And then we have The Awakening, which, um, not a big fan, to be honest. Not really a big fan at all. Not really liking The Awakening. And then, uh, we have Frontios. Yeah, Frontios is Frontios. There's nothing really to say about it. It's just good. It's just a good story. Just try it. Don't jump to conclusions of it. Just watch it. Don't think, oh, no, it doesn't look good. It looks like no, try it, please. It's a good story. Okay, now on to the third row. We have Resurrection of the Daleks, which is honestly one of my favourite Fifth Doctor stories. I It was one of the first Doctor Who stories that I ever watched, and it's stuck by me, and it's just always been good in my opinion. There's nothing really I can fault it with. Maybe it's a bit too you know depressing and bleak, but I, I love how dark it goes, to be honest. It truly shows... The Daleks at their full, you know, brutality. It's just a good story. Case of Manchazani, which, um, to be honest, believe it or not, I haven't watched this yet. I just haven't. I don't know how or why I haven't, but so many people are going, oh, Manchazani's great. I'm like, I haven't watched it, mate. It's like, well, watch it. I'm like, I'm gonna. And I just forget. I just, I always forget to. That's the thing. And I've heard so many good things about it, and it was even number one at one point, so... Oops. Attack of the Cybermen, which is... I don't really like it. It's not really good. I don't like Attack of the Cybermen that much. Vengeance on Varos. Quite good. It's quite a good story. I quite like Vengeance on Varos. Not bad at all, actually. Mark of the Rani. It's okay. Nothing amazing. Two Doctors. I don't know why people like this one. I don't know why people like this one. I find it so dull and boring. I don't know why. I love the second Doctor, but I just don't like him in this. I don't like the story. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Then we have Revelation of the Daleks, which is growing on me the more times I watch it. Um, yeah, it's not terrible, I suppose. It's okay. And now, moving out of the Sixth Doctor and on to the controversial part of this collection update is where I get onto the Seventh Doctor's era. Okay, given you forewarning, I pretty much worship the Seventh Doctor's era, so you may not like my opinions on some of these stories. Just warning you now. So, Time in the Rani, underrated in my opinion. Um, a great, really fun run around. It's such... I mean, the story is pretty, you know, lacklustre, but I, f I just... It's a fun run around, it really does cheer me up sometimes. It's, it's a really good one. Paradise Towers is a good story actually. I like that one too. Yeah, it's a good one. Delta and the Bannerman, if you don't take it seriously, you'll enjoy it. At least that's my opinion. At least that's for me. I find some real enjoyment out of this one. I just sit down and just laugh at it. Just have a just it's just a fun story in my opinion. It's a fun run around. Don't take it seriously, or it'll piss you off. I really enjoy that one. Dragonfire. Really like Dragonfire. Who doesn't like Dragonfire? Some people, I suppose. I I really like Dragonfire. Really do. It's a good one, in my opinion. Remembrance of the Daleks speaks for itself. It's one of the first classic stories that I've watched, you know, in my life, so close place to my heart. As well as that, obviously, it's um, signed by two people to prove it. it's my favourite story of all time. It's just amazing. I love this one so much. Happiness Patrol, yeah, no, it's so, okay. it's not amazing. Silver Nemesis, underrated, still don't believe that it deserves to be the 25th anniversary, don't get me wrong, it doesn't, it's just such a lagluster thing if it's going to be the 25th anniversary, because the silver, you know, anniversary of Doctor Who doesn't deserve to be that, but 
I'm not going to go out and say it's terrible because I find some enjoyment out of it. I do find it's a really fun run around. And there are so many random storylines picked up in this story that it gets a bit busy and, you know, just dramatic for no reason, but I still enjoy it. Great show in the galaxy, really good, love it. The clown in this story freaked me out so much. Oh my goodness, it's so creepy. Mm, love this story, love that story. Battlefield, it's okay. It's okay, I suppose. It's all right at times, it has its moments. Ghost Light, really like it actually, but you won't enjoy it until you've watched it five or six times. Well, you won't enjoy it until, you, until you've got some sort of idea of what was going on in the house. Otherwise, you'll be confused about it and you'll think the story's pointless. That's just common knowledge with Ghost Light, I'm afraid. So, either like it or you don't, I suppose that. That is counterintuitive. I don't know. Whatever. I don't know what I'm talking about anymore. I like Ghost Light. End of story. Curse of Fenric. Freaking amazing. I freaking love Curse of Fenric. It's such a brilliant story. I love Curse of Fenric so much. It, I can't express how much I love this story. And then we have Survival, which is a brilliant one. Yet again, it's such a fitting end to the, to the classic era. I love the climax of the Doctor versus the Master. I really do, it just fits for me, a really fitting end. I really like how they don't end it with a regeneration. Well, I mean, they couldn't because it was cancelled, wouldn't it? Was but you know what I mean, though. It, it's a really fun story. I really, really enjoy it, and it really does give you a, a glance of what happens in the Virgin New Adventures line. That is what goes into some dark areas. And I think this is a nice little taster of what, what's to come, you know? I really like that one. Then we have this documentary, More Than 30 Years in the TARDIS. Reviewed this with Kane. Um, I'll put a link in the description to it, maybe. It's a fun thing. It's quite an interesting story. It does really do well at you know paying homage to past Doc 2 stories, so it does well at its job, I suppose. The TV movie, which I have a soft spot for, to be honest. Um, one of the first... I, actually, this is the first ever piece of Doc 2 that I ever watched in my life. So... Yeah, someday I'll explain the story to you guys in a video, but until that date, this is what you're getting. It's just the first Doctor Who thing I've ever watched, so I have a soft spot for it. I've always had an appreciation for this movie. It's fun, in my opinion, at least. Then we have... Whatever this is. Now moving on to the new series, moving into Series 1. We have Series 1, Volume 1. So Rose, um, enjoyable, really enjoyable in my opinion, I've reviewed it, I'll put, you know, you can go watch that, um, like Rose, End of the World, yeah, it's okay, I suppose, I've got a review of that as well, and then Unquiet Dead, which is good, actually, I quite enjoy Unquiet Dead, it's quite a good one. Now we move on to Volume 2, which has Aliens of London and World War 3, the Slitheen two-parter, yeah, it's not terrible. I suppose it's okay, it has its moments, it's it's a, it's a good one, it's an alright one. And then we have Dalek, one of the best Doc, Doc 2 episodes of all time. Um, you know, Robert Shearman, you beauty, it's such a good episode, Dalek, it's really, really good. Then we have Volume 3, which has Long Game, Father's Day, Empty Child and Doctor Stanter. So Long Game is the weakest of Series 1 in my opinion. Father's Day, it's growing on me, it's quite a good story. And then Empty Child and Doctor Dancers. It speaks for itself. It's such a creepy story, amazing setting, amazing acting, amazing writing. It's a really good episode. Then we have Volume 3, my favourite volume in my opinion. Boomtown, underrated, classic in my opinion. I really do like Boomtown. It's such a, a nice self self-contained episode that really works and does set up the finale of this series. It really does work in my opinion. Um, Bad Wolf and Parting the Ways, amazing. I cannot express how amazing this story is that this two-parter is one of my favourites of all time. I love it. I have so much nostalgia for the for this for these two episodes. It's so good. Now moving on to series two with David Tennant, we have volume two, which contains Christmas Invasion, which is okay. It's growing on me. It's not as bad. Then we have New Earth, which is diabolical. Then we have volume. Two, which is my favourite, you know, new series volume ever. Actually, Tooth and Claw, underrated, amazing. Tooth and Claw, I love that one. School reunion speaks for itself. Really good. Canine, Sarah Jane, Quillotanes, What more could you want? It's really good. And then Girl in the Fireplace, the first Doctor episode, which made me fall in love with the show. I have so much 
to thank for that episode, Girl in the Fireplace. I love Girl in the Fireplace. It's so good. This volume just encapsulates everything that's great about David Tennant and encapsulates everything that's great about New Who, in my opinion. It's excellent. It's excellent writing. It's a brilliant release. This disc is just gold. Then we have uh, Volume 3, which has Rise of the Cybermen, Age of Steel. Really, really good. I get some nostalgia from watching that story too. It's really enjoyable. And then Idiot's Lantern, underrated. It did really creep me out when I was a kid, the woman in the telly. It really did creep me out. It just really good episode. Yeah. Then we have um, Volume 4, which has Impossible Planet and Satan Pit, which is a freaking fantastic story. It's so creepy and dark and just gritty. It's so good. I just love that one. And then we come to something which is such a buzzkill. Um, love and Monsters, which isn't really something that people should be... People should be showing this on Death Row. Let me just put it that way. People should be showing that episode on Death Row. Then we have Volume 5, Fear Her. Okay, here comes a controversial opinion here. Um, Fear Her, I enjoy. I feel like Fear Her... Hear me out here, actually. Fear Her has the vibe of a... Of a new of a new adventure novel from the you know the Virgin New Adventures, I feel like Fear Her has such such a, has got a vibe from that sort of book range era, and that's why I like it. Like the style of storytelling is so akin to that sort of area of Doctor Who of Virgin New Adventure esque. That's why I like Fear Her, in my opinion. That's my opinion, but I feel like Fear Her is such a, an interesting story and so much. Like creepiness and like bleakness as well. It's got so many like dark themes in it. Uh, it's just good and it scared me a lot when I was a kid as well. Then we have Army of Ghosts and Doomsday, which uh, I'm not the biggest fan of. There's another controversial opinion for you. I'm not really the big, biggest fan of the finale of this series two, to be honest. Started off well on crap, to be honest. No. Series two, a bit of a mixed bag, to be honest. Okay, and now we have uh, Runaway Bride, which I enjoy it has its moments but nothing too spectacular. Catherine Tate's good. Catherine Tate and David Tennant are brilliant in this actually. I don't know why I didn't say that right off the bat. Now moving on to series three we have Smith and Jones, Shakespeare Code and Gridlock. So Smith and Jones, not bad. You can actually watch Smith and Jones and you'll pretty much get the gist of what Doctor Who's about. It's like Rose to be honest, it's not bad. Shakespeare Code, quite good. It's a good one and Gridlock is a nah for me, it's not really the best. Um, then we have Daleks in Manhattan Evolution of the Daleks. Excellent story. It's got such a creepy vibe to it. I can't really fault it. It's got such a unique feel to it. Not many Doc 2 stories encapsulate a brand new feel of an episode, but this one does it. It really does it well. Lazarus Experiment. Uh, it's okay, I suppose. And we have 42, which is a nah for me. I'm not really the biggest fan of 42. It's not really the best. Then we have Volume 3, one of the best volumes of New Who. Yet again, we have Human Nature, Family of Blood. Spectacular story here. Absolutely amazing. So creepy, so brilliant. And then we have Blink, and Blink speaks for itself. Then we have Volume 4, another amazing volume right here. Um, yeah, um, Utopia, Sound of Drums, Lost of the Time Lords. Utopia, brilliant. Sound of Drums, good. And then Lost of the Time Lords, freaking amazing. Love this volume. It's amazing absolutely fantastic flipping amazing then we have voyage of the damned um yeah it's a good one it's quite good really really good Christmas special right here then we have uh series four volume one partners in crime um it's good it has its moments but it's a bit naff it's a bit naff for me it's it's okay Fires of pompeii not the biggest fan of it to be honest doesn't really speak to me and then we have planet of the ood which is Okay, I suppose it's all right. Then we have series four, volume two, Sontaran Stratagem and Poison Sky. Yeah, not bad. Not a bad story here. Not too terrible. Uh, the Doctor's Daughter. Yeah, I never really found found anything likable about the story. It didn't really speak say anything to me. It's not really that amazing, in my opinion. I'm sorry, but I don't really like it. I suppose. <laughs> Then we have Series 4, Volume 3 of Science in the Library, Forest of the Dead. Amazing, absolutely amazing two-parter right here. And then Midnight, which is, yet again, a freaking amazing. This volume is another one of the best volumes of, you know, New Who. Really, really good. Really, really, really good. 
Then we have Series 4, Volume 4, another amazing volume right here. We have Turn Left, great, which I've reviewed. Stolen Earth, Journey's End, which I've also reviewed. Um, Stolen Earth, Journey's End is just a great, you know, you know, it's a it's it's a mash together of all your favourite, you know, parts of of uh, David Tennant's era. It's really really good. I really, oh, um, but no, it's uh, I really really like this story. It's a really good one. On to an underrated story, The Next Doctor, really like it, David Morrissey steals the show, a really really fun story actually, and it's one of my favourite New Who Cyberman stories actually, this one, it's really enjoyable. Planet of the Dead, oh, don't even, no, ugh, feck off, no, don't like it. Waters of Mars, yeah, really good, really like Waters of Mars, really creepy, really cool, really like that one. And then we have uh, End of Time Part 1 and 2, yeah, good one, quite a good one, I feel like it does... Uh, it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's a good one, it's a good one, don't get me wrong. It's just, it's not, it's not spectacular, but it's not terrible either. So we have Volume 1, which has, let's have a look actually, we have Eleventh Hour, which is amazing actually, I'd really love Eleventh Hour. Beast Below, underrated guilty pleasure of mine, I really do love that one. The Smilers terrified me as a kid, just saying, really, really creepy, you know, monster right here. And then Victory of the Daleks. Doesn't really do anything for me, that one. Not really the best. We have uh, Volume 2, which has um, Flesh and Stone. We have uh, Angel, you know, Time of Angels on Flesh and Stone, which is. Um, yeah, it's. Uh, it's okay. It's a good one. It's not bad by any stretch of the imagination, but it's not amazing either. Oh, and then we have Vampires of Venice, which I love. I love Vampires of Venice. It's such an underrated one. It's got such a unique atmosphere to it as well, evidently. It's got such a unique setting. Really like Vampires of Venice, really appreciate that story, it's really unique. Amy's Choice, which is good, it's a good one, it's one of the standout ones of, of Series 5 in my opinion, quite like that one. And then we have Hungry Earth and Cold Blood with Silurians, don't like it. But then we have Series 5, Volume 4, which has Vincent and the Doctor, I don't see why people like this one, it's okay, but it's nothing amazing in my opinion, and maybe wrong in my opinion, but I don't find the enjoyment out of it personally. The Lodger, I quite enjoy this one, I love The Lodger, it's such a fun story actually, I really like The Lodger. And then we have Pandora Opens and Big Bang, quite good, quite a good story, I quite like I quite like that two part, it's really fun, really fun. And we have Christmas Carol, the only half decent Moffat Christmas special, then we have um, uh, Series 6 Volume 1 which has The Impossible Astronaut Day of the Moon. Which is okay. Um, I'd say it kicks off well. It's just it kind of concludes in a really weird spot for me. It's a bit, I don't know. It's a bit slow towards the end. Ghost of the Black Spot, underrated in my opinion. Doctor's Wife, excellent. Actually, excellent, excellent start to series. Okay, now moving on to the last shelf, we continue with series six, part two, uh, series part one, of volume two. We have um, Flesh and Stone and put and the Almost People. Uh, that's a real stinky story. I don't like that one at all. It's not really that good. Neither is Good Man Goes to War, actually. I don't know why people like Good Man Goes to War. It doesn't do anything for me at all. Then we have um, Let's Kill Hitler. Oh, don't even get me started, please. Oh. Night Terrors. Don't like it. Oh, it's so bad. I don't like Oh, no. I don't like Oh, no. Don't like it. Girl Who Waited, on the other hand. Really good. I really like Girl Who Waited. I... It's an amazing character piece. If you're if you if you're invested in Amy and Rory's story on the show, you'll absolutely love this one because it's such amazing writing. If you don't like them, then you'll find this one a difficult one to watch. Then we have the God Complex. Freaking fantastic. I love this one. One of the standout ones of, of series six actually. It really does you know, it does shine in this in this series. It's really fun, it's really got a unique atmosphere, it's really good, a really interesting ideas here. Closing time, I find it hard to enjoy this one. I didn't really like this one at all, which is a shame. I expected I would because of Craig and the Cybermen, but I didn't really like it upon rewatch. And then Wedding of River Song, um. Feck off. Doctor Willow in the Water. <coughs> I can't say that word without throwing up, I'm afraid. I'm just gonna have to put that back before I get contagious. Then we have Series 7, Part 1. We have uh, Asylum of the Daleks. Um. Um. Uh, no, not good. Not good story. Not good story. Not good story. Uh, Donuts and the spaceship. Oh, no. Don't like that one at all. No, not fun. 
Not a good story. Please don't make me watch that, please. A Town Called Mercy, on the other hand, I have an appreciation for I have a soft spot for it. It's not terrible, in my opinion, at least. Um, could be better, could be worse. I quite like Town Called Mercy. It's got a unique atmosphere. That's what I'm after in most stories, it seems. But no, I quite like this one. Then we have Power of Free. Ooh. I did a review on it, if you guys want to go back and watch that. But... Mm. Yeah. I'm not the biggest fan of it now, to be honest. I liked it in the review, but upon rewatch, ugh, bleh, no, don't like it. No, go away. Angels Take Manhattan. Oh, it's okay. I'm not the biggest fan of it, to be honest. It's not the best. Now moving on to series seven two A, we have the Snowman, which is terrible. The Bells of St John, terrible. The Rings of Akin Ten, on the other hand. I enjoy. I enjoy the unique. I like. I like the unique vibe. I like. I like. They've actually, you know. I like the world building in this story. I really enjoy how unique it is. I really do because they don't do much out of space travelling anymore. And that's why I like this one. I do appreciate uh, Rings of Akaten. The other two episodes in this bit disc is shit. Then we have series seven two B. We have Cold War. Um, underrated. Hide. Ugh, naff in my opinion. Journey Center of the TARDIS I used to like, now I hate. Crimson Horror, not even worth mentioning. Nightmare in Silver, absolute shite. And Name of the Doctor, under, you know, over, over, over appreciated piece of crap. And speaking of overrated piece of crap, we have Day of the Doctor, which we need to put away before I, you know, I don't know, just go away, Day of the Doctor. Time of the Doctor, I used to like for some reason. I have no idea why. I don't like it anymore. I really don't. It's not fun at all. It's not a fun story. It's just, let's jam every single thing about the Moffat era into one episode. And what do we get? We get this mess. That's what we get. Um, not a fan, if you can't tell already. Now moving on to the 12th Doctor. We move on to Peter Capaldi's era. We have complete series eight. Let's look at the episodes. So we have Deep Breath. Amazing story. I love Deep Breath. Into the Dalek. Absolute shite. Robot of Sherwood. Terrible. Listen was one of my favourite stories of all time. Now it's absolute shit. I hate it. Th time Heist, terrible. The Caretaker, I have a soft spot for. Kill the Moon, it speaks for itself. It's Kill the Moon, don't even mention it. Mummy on Unit Express, great on the other hand. Flatline, amazing. Um, Into the Forest of the Shite, ugh, don't even know. Go away. Dark Water, terrible. Death in Heaven is Death in Heaven. Then we have Last Christmas, which we need to put away. We have Series 9, Part 1. Let's look at the episodes. We have Magician's Apprentice and the Witches, but familiar. Uh, I did enjoy it, and now it's kind of gone down in my list. It's not absolute, it's not terrible in my opinion, but it's nothing amazing. It's not really amazing now. It's okay. Then we have Under the Lake Before the Flood, one of my favourite Doctor Who stories of all time right here. It's a two-parter which really does revitalise it. When I was watching the series, I was thinking, what is Doctor Who now, man? And then I watched this two-parter and it revitalised my love. I'm like, this is what I live for. This is this is the Doctor Who stuff which I watch for, you know. These episodes, you know, Under, Under the Lake Before the Flood. Really, really good. But then it precedes it is Girl Who, Girl who Died and Woman Who Lived, which is absolutely atrocious, so... There goes my hopes and dreams of Doctor Who being good again. But then we have Series 9 Part 2, let's look at the episode. Zygon Invasion and Zygon Inversion, uh, nope, don't like it. We have Sleep No More, which is... Uh, sleep No More. We have uh, Face the Raven, which is overrated. Heaven Sent, really good. Hellbent, shit. So there you go, um, there's Series 9 for you. Then we have Husbands of River Song, which we need to forget. We need to erase it from our minds. Didn't bother to get Doctor Mysterio for obvious reasons. I want to avoid that piece of shit. And then we move on to Series 10. Let's look at the episodes of Series 10, shall we? I have reviewed every single episode of Series 10, but we'll go through them now for you. So, the pilot, absolute shit. It's absolutely atrocious. Don't bother with the pilot. We waited a year for the pilot, and we get that. We get the, we get that. And if you want to count uh, Doctor Mysterio's canon, it's even worse. You wait a year for Doctor Mysterio, and you get that piece of shit. Yay. And you think that it's going to be better after Doctor Mysterio and you get the pilot. Yeah, thanks BBC, thanks Moffat, you're definitely doing us a favour here. Anyway, um, rant over. Then we have Smile. Um, no, not good. The Nice, terrible. Knock Knock, I have a soft spot for, but it doesn't mean it's amazing. We have Oxygen, which I really enjoy. And then we have Extremis, which is a piece of shit, which is a technical term at this point. Then we have Series 10 Part 2, let's look at the episodes here. 
Pyramid of the End of the World I used to enjoy, now I've realised how much a stupid episode it is. It's them stood out of a pyramid for the majority of the episode, face it. Lie of the Land, um, overrated and just a letdown. Hate Lie of the Land. Empress of Mars is okay. It's a good story, nothing amazing anymore. Eaters of Light, absolute gobshite. Um, World of Northern Time, really good. Doctor Falls, piece of crap. So, yeah. Doctor Who's looking good for Series 11, isn't it? But in all seriousness, no. Doctor Who Series 11. I'm keeping my hopes up, but I'm not setting my expectations too high because I don't want to be let down. So, I don't know. We'll just have to see what Chris Chibnall does with the show. I haven't got anything against Chris Chibnall or Jodie Whittaker, not until Series 11 comes out and, you know, proves you know me wrong that they're going to be terrible. But in the meantime, we'll just have to wait and see, won't we? So let's move on to these other little releases I have beer before the video ends. We have the Platinum you know, release of the Dalek movie collection with Dr. the Daleks uh, with, and then Dalek in Phase 2150 AD, which is um, uh, such an amazing piece. I got this when I was a child and I love it. I absolutely love this. Then we have this little docudrama which stars David Bradley. We have uh, An Adventure in Space and Time. Um, I love this one, it's really good. Oh, and speaking of David Bradley, I didn't get Twice Upon a Time for obvious reasons. Just clearing that up for you. Then we have the Five Doctors Fact File Edition and then Five Doctors Special Edition. It almost looks like I'm obsessed with this story. I'm not, I just happen to pick up every single edition of, his, of this DVD, I suppose. And now if you're wondering what these five are, these are my... I, I got these when I was a child. These are the VHS transfer to DVDs. My dad knew a friend from his work who, um who absolutely adored Classic Who and 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 my and he knew that, that my that I loved Doctor Who so so he transferred these to DVD, his VHS to DVD and gave me them. So we'll just go through them. So we have um, the Chase here, we have uh, the Tenth Planet, we have I believe this is Curse of Peladon, no Monster of Peladon and Death to the Daleks on this one. And then we have uh, Planet of the Spiders and then we have um, Revenge of the Cybermen, and that means these five um, discs right here are among some of the first Doctor Who episodes that I ever watched, like growing up, you know, so that's a fun fact for you. And now moving on to some of the spin-offs, we have Torchwood, the complete collection, even that. But you know, yeah, yeah it's, it, I love Torchwood, so I couldn't not get this. I, really, really fun. Now moving on to Sarah Jane, which I need to review some of Sarah Jane. I've started reviewing Torchwood finally, but we need to review some Sarah Jane, don't we? But yeah, so, um, Sarah Jane Series 1, um, yeah, quite fun. I won't go through the episodes separately, but I, overall, Series 1 is quite fun. Series 2, quite good. Series 3 is probably my favourite of Sarah Jane, either that or Series 4, but yeah, Series 3 is good. Yep, Series 4, really, really good, really, really good rounded off series at the end of them. We have, it's such a shame that this never got finished because it had potential, but yeah, the fifth, the fifth series isn't really the best to be honest, but that's because we only got three adventures, and yeah. And obviously you can see here I have some of my Red Dwarf. I have a goal of Red Dwarf, that's because I've just been cherry picking some of the good episodes from from these discs to be honest, that's more than anything. And then you can see here peeking out at the end of here is my... Star Trek Next Generation collection. I have my other Star Treks elsewhere, so that's why they didn't fit on the shelf, so they're upwards, they're, they're somewhere else then, yeah. So, yeah, with that said, that pretty much does it, so let's just end off the video, I suppose. So, that will be the end of my Doc 2 DVD collection for 2018. I hope you enjoyed this video, I hope it was fun for you to watch, uh, you know, and find out what I have in my collection so far of my DVDs. So, yeah, I hope I gave you some insight on my like opinion on some of these episodes for you now. It was a very long video in the end. Sorry about that if you weren't looking for a long video for a DVD collection, but here you are. So, yeah. Like I say, I hope you enjoyed, and yeah, I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.